You're more clever than I gave you credit for. That trial period I mentioned, consider it complete. Now that I'll be taking over Francesco's business, there'll be more work for everyone. Now, much of Nomar's backstory is one which still remains a mystery, and since I made a breakdown of her backstory about what we knew about her character after episode 1, she's pretty much remained a ghost. While she's been in Paris, Obi's overseeing her operation in New York, training Tariq St. Patrick with Grand Estelle, Kane with Diana, Brayden with his parents, and with Effie, he said he'll kill her team because her family is unknown, but we'll get to that later on. But after episode 5 where Tariq said Nomar basically owns them forever, after what happened with Francesco Lombardo, Effie said don't be so sure about that. Effie made reference to a very bold strategic move to come out of Nomar's thumb, using Nomar's daughter, but I really don't think she's thinking about who she's messing with, although the look on Tariq's face, he definitely does. So in this video, we're going to be exploring a bit more of Nomar's backstory after some new revelations about her ex, Francesco Lombardo, how she has a daughter, and how her character shapes up to be one of the most ruthless in the Power Universe, but also how I believe Nomar's character could still be the setup to the London-based spin-off because of a global empire and just how they seem to be shaping up a character in Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3. Now, when we were introduced to Nomar, her introduction was ruthless and it was up there as one of the best in the Power Universe, more so because the writing of Ghost Season 3 has pretty much kept her appearances fairly short, sweet and to the point. Even though we've only seen Nomar in Episodes 1 and 5, she's shown that she's a character who doesn't play games, and she certainly has stamped her authority when we have seen her. Over the course of the first half of Season 3, from Nomar's backstory which I'm going to explore in a bit more detail in just a moment, we know she's a big player. She has a global empire and she has contractors working for her all around the world, Tariq St. Patrick and Effie being two of her favourite. But I do want to touch base on one of the most ruthless and favourite connects in the Power Universe, Felipe Lobos. Felipe Lobos was a character who was introduced early in Power as a cartel boss, someone who Ghost and Tommy had been working for for 6 months before the events of Power, but you could instantly see why he became a fan favourite. From his mannerisms to the way he conducted business, Felipe Lobos was arguably the best connect that we saw on Power, although I'm sure many others would have their own favourites. Now, I'm not saying Nomar surpasses Felipe Lobos, but she certainly has a lot more potential. As we've established, she's big in the game. She's someone who runs a global empire and in episode 5, she showed us again. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty to having snipers up on the hilltop and even executing her daughter's father. So just imagine what was going through Tariq St. Patrick's head at this moment in time as he just escaped a near-death experience and I'm going to come to exactly what he thinks in just a moment. Francesco Lombardi's mansion. Now to most of Europe, he's an oil giant. But he's one of my biggest arms competitors. And my ex. Every so often we are being drip-fed information about Nomar's backstory, so let's take a look at this in a bit more detail considering we've been given a bit more information in episode 5. Now, Noma was born in Nigeria, but orphaned in the UK by two UK gangsters, and she also grew up in the street game in the UK. She then found her way to America where she then met Mecca, and this is where their story unfolds. She was also engaged to Mecca who promised her this blue diamond ring, but Mecca also used to work for her undercover. You think he can replace Mecca? He had federal protection. He informed on my rivals and ensured the Fed stayed out of my business. Can you do that? So Mecca used to work for Nomar as a spy, helping her take out some of her biggest competitors, Francesco Lombardo being one of them, who also happens to be one of her exes. So just as Tariq and Effie were finally able to take their minds away from the chaotic lives they live in New York, Nomar walked in and took a seat at their table, and this meant their little date was cut short, just when they were talking about their long-term plan of leaving the game. The game caught up with them once again, and this is also the first time Effie met Nomar, now this is where it was revealed that Mecca was working for her undercover where he placed a listening device in Francesco Lombardo's mansion, who happens to be one of Nomar's exes, but now one of her biggest arms competitors. So Tariq, Effie and Brayden were sent on this mission to retrieve this listening device from Francesco Lombardo's mansion, but as Effie found herself in Francesco's private art gallery, she found a painting of Francesco, Nomar and their daughter. So here's where it gets interesting. Nomar may be sharing a daughter with Francesco Lombardo, but that didn't stop her from ruthlessly executing the father of her daughter, and this is who they're dealing with. Tari described her as a savage, and if Nomar's a savage for what she did to Francesco, then what does that make Monet who kills Zeke's father, as well as Drew, Kane, and Diana's? But what does that also make Tariq St. Patrick, who happened to kill his own father too? Ghost. They're all definitely savages in their own respective ways, and that's why I think Tariq knows she's dangerous. Tariq knows that after the events that unfolded with Francesco Lombardo means that they'll never be able to escape from under Nomar's thumb, but Effie believes she's found her Achilles heel. We have a way out. How? She's our way out. Now this is where I think we need to take a step back for a moment. Effie couldn't even do the job on Lauren, 
So what makes her think that she can use Noma's daughter as leverage to gain her freedom? And how would they even find Noma's daughter? Now I know this is where a lot of people think Effie or Kiki could be Noma's daughter, but I'm a firm believer of not every character has to be connected in the Power Universe, and Effie is someone who grew up with a brother who was killed in a robbery gone wrong, and a mother who turned to alcohol. There's also been no mention of a father, and in episode 2 she was called Orphan Annie. Now someone else who grew up as an orphan was Noma, but that doesn't necessarily make them connected, because there is nothing solid for us to go in regards to that theory, but for Kiki Travis, the jury is open because we still don't know about who she is or her past. But going back to Effie finding the picture and saying they can use Noma's daughter as leverage to gain their freedom is completely crazy, and Tariq St. Patrick definitely knows that. One of the principles of the 48 Laws of Power may be to discover each man's dumb screw through a weakness and where you can use their weakness as leverage, but threatening a loved one when they've just seen how ruthless Noma is, I think is crazy on Effie's part. Tariq not only saw Noma execute the father of a daughter, but they know each and every single one of Tariq St. Patrick and his crew's weaknesses, and for Tariq it's Grandma Estelle, someone who we are going to see return in episode 6. But on Tariq trying to make Effie understand how much of a savage Noma really is, it's because he's been around some of the biggest savages in the game. Tommy has one of the highest body counts in power, he also killed his own father Tony Teresi. His father was Ghost and his best friend was Kanan Stark who happened to kill his own son Sean Stark. Now Tariq also knows what lens he went to when he came to protecting his own mother Tasha St. Patrick as well as Yasmin in season 2 and surely he doesn't think it's a good idea to go after Nomar's daughter which I don't think he does. So I really do hope Effie hears what Tariq is saying loud and clear. Although there is a part of me which does want to see Effie dig deeper, because I think we all want to know who Noma's daughter is, and at some point, I think we'll all find out who she is. The police have not made any arrests regarding his murder. You two haven't heard anything, have you? Nothing. Now, this is another element we can't overlook. Mecca was very important to Noma, not just because he was her fiance, but having Mecca around gave Noma a certain advantage over her competitors. For example, just like how he planted the listening device in Francesco Lombardo's mansion, and it seems that she's taken a keen interest in his case, and she mentioned there's still be no arrest and questioned Tariq St. Patrick once again around his death, and I think she wants to get down to the bottom of who exactly killed her fiancé and spy, so that's just something to keep in mind, because she is a woman who means business and seems to get what she wants, so when and if she finds out Monet was the one behind the trigger, I wonder what she's going to do to Monet. So that's a breakdown of Nomar's character and how we're being drip fed her backstory bit by bit. She's a character whose appearances have definitely been kept limited for a reason and it just adds to a mystery where I want to know more, especially when it comes to her daughter. But we all know where Effie and Tariq stand, they both want to leave the game, but they can't do that working for Nomar, so can they find out who her daughter is and use her as leverage? It's a very dangerous game in my opinion and even though Tariq St. Patrick knows it, I don't think Effie does. So drop all your thoughts down below on who you think Noma's daughter could be and everything else in terms of a backstory and history. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.